Here's what this day is about. This is called the unit circle. Unit means one. I actually didn't know that when I started teaching. Uh, the word unit means one. Okay, so if they say the unit price, that means the price for one. Unit circle, that means a circle where the radius is one. All right, so, so what, Mr. Sir, right? What is, how does this impact anything? Well, it actually, it's very, very powerful to be able to use a unit circle. Now, some kids will memorize this unit circle and they will have an advantage. They will have an advantage over the people that don't memorize it. It'd be a little bit like if you memorized uh, all of the, the multiples all the way out to two digits. You know, most of you guys can go six times eight and you're like, six times eight is 48, that's easy. I know that one, right? But do you know 24 times three in your head? No. Well, some of you, maybe you do, but, or maybe you just know how to get it. See, the unit circle, if you memorize it, it's just like, you know, 6 times 8 is 48, and you got that memorized, and you just don't have to find it. You just know it. With the unit circle, you can, I can say things like, what's the sine of 3 pi over 2? And you can be like, oh, I know that answer. You just know it. Versus this, you have a process. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Oh, that's 72. Or maybe your way is different, but you get 72. The difference is, one of them takes a little more time, but do I really expect you to memorize this? No, because I expect you to know how to get it. Same idea with the unit circle. If you had it memorized, would it be an advantage to have all the double digit numbers multiplied? Mem yeah, it'd be awesome, but it'd be a lot of work and questionable whether or not it's worth it. Because if you have a way to get it, that's the, what's important. So for today, I'm not expecting you to memorize the unit circle, but I'm expecting you to have a way to get answers like, what is sine of 3 pi over 2? But to be able to do that, you have to at least have a clue where 3 pi over 2 is. Everybody right now, go off to the side, make a circle like this. We're going to make this circle so many times. It's going to become your best friend in this unit is the unit circle sketch. Now, where is 3 pi over 2? Well, let's actually start with a different one. Where's pi over 6? So you always would start here, and then you'd swing up like this direction, unless you wanted negative pi over 6, in which case you'd swing down. But I'm swinging up, and I have it about there, and I'd say that is about pi over 6. How many of you knew that it was going to be about there? Okay, good. And you have a chance. If you don't have these memorized yet, you've got to get them down now. Like, pi over 6 is one-sixth of the way to pi. Remember how pi is over there? Please label that on your, on your chart, that pi is over there. So the sixths are super powerful because they give you one pi over 6. This is two pi over 6. This is three pi over 6. But wait, you might be like, I thought that was pi over 2. Isn't 3 pi over 6 going to reduce to pi over 2, right? 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and this is actually 6 pi over 6. Because that's the same thing as pi, right? So when I ask you where 7 pi over 6 is, the way I would think of it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi over 6 plus 1 more. That's 7 pi over 6. See what I mean? Would everybody label 11 pi over 6 on your drawing? We don't have to label all of them, but we're just going to label a few. Hopefully you were right there. 11 pi over 6. Do you get that if I had gone one more, it would have been at 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi? And you might be like, I thought that was 0. It is. They're both there. And that's the concept I was trying to teach you yesterday, which is called coterminal angles. All right, I'm going to have you, while I uh, help a student here, I'm going to ask you to do that same exact thing with a different circle for pi over threes. I'd label, like you to label, in fact, I'll even help. There's one pi over three. It's about the same as 60. I know because it's like 180 divided by three, because pi is like 180. 
I'd like you to label all the pi over threes. One pi over three, two pi over three, three, four, five, and six pi over three. I'm gonna pause for a sec while you guys work on that. So one pi over three, this is two pi over three, this is three pi over three. And look at that, they're about the same. They're about 60s. In fact, they're exactly 60s. All right, so pi over threes. Then four pi over three is here, five pi over three is here. And then six pi over three would be right here. It's the same as two pi. So what I'm gonna to try to teach you today is to do things like this. I'd like you to use a new color that you haven't used. Like for me, that would be uh, black. No, wait, I have a black line in here, green. And I want you to highlight the line two pi over three, right there. And now we gotta figure out the sign of two pi over three. This is where two pi over three is. So the first thing we have to do is we have to draw a triangle around this. Everybody make the triangle by going from the circle, dropping straight down, and then go over. You cannot do it the other way. It has to drop to the x-axis. And now we gotta label this puppy. And I'll tell you, we only use nice ones. We only use 30s, 60s, or 45s. Like we're not gonna ask you to do this with a 22 degree angle. At least, not unless you have a calculator. Okay, so we're not using a calculator on this. And you're supposed to be able to tell me, is that a 30, 60, 90? Or is that a 45, 45, 90? Which one is it? 30, 60, good. And isn't this a 60? And then isn't this the 90? And then this has to be the 30. And then I've tried to train you that go across from the 30 and you make that a one. And then it's one, two is the hypotenuse and the square root of three. But wait, Mr. Server, you said it was the unit circle. You're right. So we need to scale this down. All right, but first I want to teach you something without, without changing the numbers. Do you agree I told you to memorize 1, 2, and square root of 3, right? Okay. So now if I want the sine of 2 pi over 3, the most common mistake in circle trig is going to be to forget that there's a negative side. Sometimes there's two negative sides. Which of these three numbers, judging by how we drew it in the quadrant we drew it in, which of them is negative? The one, the two, or the square root of three? The one. Why? Because we are. if that's the origin, then the numbers over here are negative, aren't they? That's negative one. That will be the most common mistake in circle trig is to forget a negative. Obviously, that's not the hardest thing about circle trig, but it's the most common oops is that number was negative. Okay, now sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Would you agree with that? Yes, question or comment? Um, I was, so if the two is going to the left, why would that one be negative as well? Good question. Okay, so by definition, these can be positive or negative but the radius will always be positive. Just by a definition of a circle, you can't have a radius with a negative length. And so that's a very good question because I get what you mean, but uh, the two, because it's the radius of the circle, will never be negative. Okay, thank you for bringing that up because it's a good point. Okay, so now back to, I have sine, isn't sine opposite over hypotenuse? Well, what's the angle though? Of the three angles, this one right here, that's the key angle. That's called the central angle. Okay, that one's near the center of the circle. So that 60 is the one we use when we're deciding opposite and hypotenuse. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is root three over two. This is the opposite and this is the hypotenuse. So the sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. But Mr. Server, that negative never mattered. Like, why does it even matter that that's negative? Well, it would matter if we did a difference function. Let's do cosine. 
of 2 pi over 3. Wait till I do this first. Cosine of 2 pi over 3. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. <coughs> negative 1 over 2. How many of you had negative 1 over 2? Do you see that once you draw the triangle, these, are, these become pretty easy? Now back to the unit circle thing. Remember me saying that there's this thing called the unit circle, and if you memorize the unit circle, you can have a lot of these answers like kind of automatically, but you'd have to memorize the whole unit circle? This is one of the spots at the unit circle. But to get this to be a unit circle question, I have to have a radius that isn't 2. I want you to think about that while I answer a student's question. How could I get that radius, which is currently 2, to be a radius of 1? Yes? So if you said that we have to sign it, um, since it's 60, but since it's 2 pi over 3, doesn't that make this 1 pi? I get what you're saying. This angle isn't the same as 2 pi over 3. No, it's not. That is called the reference angle. It's the angle in the triangle that goes with the 2 pi over 3. So I get that's not a 2 pi over 3. This is a 2 pi over 3. That angle is 2 pi over 3. But it will work to use its reference angle. And now you have hit on what this is all about, which is that this spot and this spot actually come out the same. Isn't that weird? This spot and this spot will come out the same. You're right, and that's what the unit circle does, is it shows you this pattern, which also goes to this spot down here. I could have drawn the triangle down here. Or this spot down here. I could have drawn the triangle down there. And I'll get basically the same thing in each of those answers, except some of them are negative. Okay. So I'm trying to slowly build your understanding, and I don't feel like you're ready quite yet to actually get to unit circle. But I asked you the question, how could I get that 2 to become a 1? Yes? Um, sorry, you could change the radius to 1, and you could do the other triangle accordingly. So if I'm going to change 2 to a 1, instead of saying I'm going to subtract 1 from all the sides, do you get that wouldn't really work? I could divide all the sides by 2, though, couldn't I? So do you get I can divide this by 2? And I could divide this by 2. And I can divide this by 2. And 2 divided by 2 has got a 1 now. Cool. And this is negative 1 half. And that's root 3 over 2. Weird. That's the same as our answer was. Our answer was root 3 over 2. So this spot right here then would be labeled with negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Why? Because I went this direction, negative 1 half, and this direction, root 3 over 2. So that's why this is negative 1 half and root 3 over 2. Now, here's the part that, again, may be going over your head right this second, and it's okay if it does. But the sign of it was root 3 over 2. That was the y value of that point. The x of it is negative 1 half. Look at that. And that was the cosine. Sine is like the y. Cosine is like the x. But what about tangent? What if I wanted the tangent? Tangent, you know that you actually wouldn't even need a tangent button on your calculator? Because tangent actually is sine divided by cosine. If you never knew that before, maybe you should write that down. Tangent of an angle is sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. 
So, since the sine is the y of your point, and the cosine is the x of your point, tangent is like y over x. Whew, intense. Do you get there's a few things you're going to have to memorize here? Sine goes with y, cosine goes with x, tangent goes with y over x. These are not things that we're going to have on a little chart for you on a, somewhere. You're going to have to memorize those. There are things we give you in this class for free, like the law of cosines is written on your last test, but these aren't going to be, so you got to memorize them. If I say sine, you say what? Why? why? All right, I'm going to sidestep for just a second and try to show you why that's the case. All right, you don't have to draw this, but if you judge it to be worthy, you can draw it if it makes sense to you. Would you agree this distance is like x? Would you agree that this distance here is kind of like your y direction? All right. And that this is the important angle right there. That one's like theta. I better erase that and try to make it nicer. Theta is this angle right here. Do you get how that would kind of make sense? X and y and theta. And if I'm in the unit circle, would you agree that this is 1? Because this radius is supposed to be 1 then tell me what the sine of theta is. Why? But, uh, wait a minute. Sine's opposite over hypotenuse. So it's y over 1, which is y. See? Sine is y. Because it's y over 1, and that's y. What's cosine? x over 1, but that's x. What's tangent? Very good. Some of you have a short-term memory. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite, adjacent. This may literally be the most important day of this semester. That's why I'm here instead of staying home. Because, like, this is really important to get across well to you. Because, yes, if you missed today and you never watched the video, eventually you'd catch up on all these things. But super important. It lays the foundation of the whole second semester. Okay. So, sine's y, cosine's x, tangent's y over x. So, if I was going to name this point, would you agree that this point would be x comma y? Goes over x up y. So what's the sign of this point? Well, it's y. So couldn't I just look at the y? Yes, you could. Sign is the y. So whatever number's right there, that's the sign of this angle right here. And the x, that's the cosine of that angle. So if I give you a random spot, like over here, and I say that that spot I'm going to actually draw it, and I know what it is. I know this is a 45-degree angle, and so I'm going to know that this is 1, 1, and the square root of 2. And so I'm going to say that this... Oh, wait, most common mistake in circle trig. They're both negative. And then if I want this to be the unit circle, I'm going to divide everything by the square root of 2. Then this point right here is negative 1 over root 2 negative 1 over root 2. Everything I have taught you is important in this class. Do you remember that I taught you how to rationalize denominators, 2? So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2 on the top and the bottom, here and here. And this is what you'll see on the actual unit circle, because a lot of schools don't want you to say 1 over root 2. I will take it. It's a right answer in my world, because... The AP Calc test does not make you rationalize. You could say 1 over root 2 and be just fine. Otherwise, you could say root 2 over 2, and it's the same exact thing. It's just rationalized. And I need a test, so you're going to fill out this thing in here, and then I'll sign it for you. Okay.
That's intense, I know. But why did I take all that time to make that point? Because now that I got this point right here, here's the why. That's the sign of that angle right there, which would be in pi over fours. So this is five pi over four. I hope you can do that. One pi over four would be here, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four. So this would be five pi over four. So the sine of five pi over four is that, or this, I would have taken either. And the cosine of it is this, or this, I would have taken either. And the tangent would actually be this divided by this. And wait a minute, they're the exactly the same. So the tangent of this would just be one. If I go back to the original, Toa would have been opposite over adjacent. From this angle's perspective, opposite and adjacent, and they're the same exact thing. So it would have been one. Okay, that's a lot. Let's go back to a nice, clean, blank unit circle. Everybody make one of these. And it doesn't even have to be the unit circle for these to work. But I want you to label it well so that you can tell me where, uh, let me think. Six pi over four is. I know, there's another way to write that. I want you to think of it in terms of 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi over 4. Did you start here and go 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi over 4? And some of you were like, why didn't you just say 3 pi over 2? I could have. Get you the same spot. So then, try drawing a triangle with that. And go, well, you said drop to the x-axis. Yup, all you got is a straight line. But if you're on the unit circle, unit means 1, then you can tell me what point this is. What comma what? Zero comma negative one. And so you can tell me the sign by knowing that it's y. The y value of it. So if I had you use your calculator and type in sine of three pi over two, but you'd have to be in radians because this is radians, right? Sine of three pi over two, which by the way, in degrees, that would have been sine of 270. Your answer would come out negative one. And what would the cosine of it be? Uh, zero. Oh, you were jumping ahead to tangent, weren't you? Cosine would be the x of it, which is zero. And tangent of it, tangent of three pi over two is, I agree. Because you divide by zero, and negative one divided by zero, y divided by x, no solution. Okay, man, that's so dense. What I just taught you there, that was probably the most important half hour of maybe even the year because it sets up the whole second semester. In first semester, if you just had one concept you didn't get, it wouldn't be a big deal. But in this, if you don't get this, seriously, everything's gonna keep coming back to this chapter, chapter 12. It's huge, mungus. And that, don't let that terrify you if you don't get it yet. We're going to re-go over it and re-go over it and re-go over it because it's so important. But just trying to really encourage you to dig in and listen close today. All right, let's go back up to 1 pi over 4, which is up here. 1 pi over 4. If I draw the triangle, it would go with that. This is called the reference triangle. This angle right there, that's called the reference angle. And I am most happy still in, in degrees. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Radians are still a second language to me. So I would be thinking in terms of that's a 45, 45, 90. If you got to be that good at radians that you call it the pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2 triangle, technically that's like saying 45, 45, 90. Because this is what this is. This is pi over 2. This is pi over, nope, sorry, pi over 4, pi over 4. 
and this is a pi over 2 angle, which, but nobody's going to say that, really. They're going to say 45, 45, 90, right? Okay, so let's call it the 45, 45, 90, even though you could say it in radians. And then it's 1, 1 square root of 2. But wait, if you want me to be in the unit circle, then don't I have to divide everything by root 2? Yes, but you don't have to do that. I want to make sure you get that. You don't have to do that. Because if I ask you for the sign here, the sign of, the, the, we're in a new spot here now. We're not at 6 pi over 4. That was down in that other spot. We're at this spot, which is at 1 comma 1. Nope, nope, it wouldn't be that because we are on the unit circle. It doesn't, okay, so I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to do it the unit circle way, and I'm going to do it what I think is the easy way. If I want sine of pi over 4, I would draw this triangle and then just use sine as opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over root 2. You see how quick that was? Isn't that what opposite over hypotenuse means from this angle's perspective? Opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over root 2. Would you please figure out what cosine of pi over 2 is? Sorry, pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4. Well, it's adjacent, which is this one, over hypotenuse. It's the same thing. You're right. Now I'm going to show you the unit circle way to do it. If a kid has the unit circle memorized, they know that this has to be divided by the square root of 2. And this spot will become 1 over root 2, comma 1 over root 2. And then if they're going to do it the unit circle way, they would say sine is the y. Boom, 1 over root 2. But you didn't have to do all those extra steps. You could have just taken your triangle and said 1 over root 2. So do you think it's better to memorize this? If so, memorize it. Then when I say sine of pi over 4, you're going to have this all memorized, and you're going to go, okay, that's the y value of it, so it's 1 over root 2. Or, since it could be rationalized, it could be root 2 over 2. Because remember, you do like this. And the same thing with this one, of course. Good times by root 2 over root 2, which would be root 2 over 2. So there's two ways to do it. I personally don't like leaning on the unit circle that much, but I do respect that some of you are going to decide to memorize that whole unit circle, and I'll show it to you in a second. And then you'll be able to just go sine is the y, cosine is the x, and tangent, you'll have to divide the y by the x. But I actually think it's easier to not memorize the unit circle. But kind of like I was arguing, would I memorize what 14 times 7 is? No. I'd have a way to get it. My way of getting it would be, yay, it's 98. Didn't take me that long. If I memorized the unit circle, it'd be like this. If I would have just memorized that was 98, it would have come out faster. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so if I memorize the unit circle, here's what that looks like. I return to... There, this page is good. It's page four. You would memorize each of these spots. And the kind of cool part is that, do you remember these were exactly the same as each other? And this was exactly the same, and this is exactly the same. All of those were the same. We're going to do it right now just to show you. Everybody draw this triangle in there right here. Can you tell what this angle is right here? I can, because I know it's either 30, 60, or 45. So what do I think it is? It's got to be 60. Okay, so if that's 60, then I know this is a 30, and I know that this is a 1. That's how I kind of do it. I find my 30, and I go across from it, I put a 1, and then I put a 2 here, and then I put a square root of 3. And then if you're going to make it the unit circle, I divide everything by 2 so that the radius could be 1. 
But I don't have to do that if I just want to find sine of this spot. This spot is 60, a.k.a. the spot is the same as 2 pi over 3s. And if I want sine of that, it would be opposite over hypotenuse. I think it's easiest to just go opposite hypotenuse. It's root 3 over 2. I'm done. But if you were to make the unit circle for it, you divide everything by 2, divide everything by 2, divide everything by 2, and then sine is the y, which is root 3 over 2. And the x of it is 1 half. So the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is still 1 half. Then the thing that's kind of cool about the unit circle is that it bounces over here. And this is negative 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2. Down here, it's still negative 1 half, but now it's negative root 3 over 2. And over here, it's positive 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. So sure, a kid that's got the unit circle memorized has an advantage. Because you would be able to say, okay, that spot, hopefully you'd know that was a whole bunch of 60s, which is a whole bunch of pi over 3s. So then that's going to be 3, 4, 5 pi over 3. That's what that spot is. But then if you have it memorized, you'd be able to go cosine, or sorry, sine of it is negative root 3 over 2. Cosine of it is 1 half. And tangent would be the one divided by the other. This divided by this. So I'm trying to make the case for both. If a kid memorizes the unit circle, do they have an advantage? Yes, because they can know all of those spots. But here's the dumb part. The kid that memorizes the whole thing, you know what they're going to do on the test? They're going to draw the unit circle on the test, which takes, what, a whole bunch of time. And isn't the whole point of the unit circle to try to, like, save you time? Well, it's also to show you these cool patterns, which there is a lot of cool patterns in here. But I just think you don't have to use the unit circle to get your answers. So I'm going to show you that one last time. Go off to the side, draw this. Most of the time, you don't need the unit circle. There is four times when you have to use the unit circle, and that's here, and here, and here, and here, and those are called the quadrantals. There's four of them, quad. I don't know what rantal stands for, but it is quadrantals, all right? And this spot is at, well, if it's a unit circle, this is one comma zero. Would you label the other spots? <clears throat> This is the only time when you'd have to know the unit circle, is if you want the sine of zero degrees, or sine of pi over two, which is this spot. This is pi, and this is three pi over two. Did you label this one? What'd you get, Davis? What comma what? I put zero comma. You are correct. Lucas, this spot here. Uh, negative 1, comma 0. Perfect. And this last spot right here, Lucas? Um, 0, negative 1. Perfect. Now, do you get, if I'm doing sine at this spot, sine of 0, a.k.a. sine of 0 or 0 degrees, weirdly, 0 radians is the same as 0 degrees. They're both a 0. Kind of weird, but sine of 0 is the y, so it's 0. Cosine of 0 is the x. Sorry, 0, not, not theta. Cosine of 0 is the x value, which is 1. And what's tangent there? It's 1 over 0. Does that even exist? Oh, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Zero. It's 0 over 1. Does that exist? Yeah. Yes, what is it? Yeah. 0. Tangent is the y over the x. So tangent of zero degrees, which is also theta. It's weird, but it's true. Theta is zero. I'll just make it a zero. Tangent of zero is zero. 
All right. So do you get this? I had to build this for you. We couldn't have just done it without the unit circle because of these four spots. Because otherwise, if I asked you what sine of pi over 2, by the way, that's a 90-degree angle. Remember how in the old days you were always drawing right triangles? But you could never do sine of this angle because you don't have an opposite and hypotenuse because the opposite is the hypotenuse. You get how we could never do sine of 90 before? But now we can do sine of 90. I ask you, look at the circle, look at the spot. What is the sine of pi over 2? Say it if you know it. It's 1. It's the y. What's the cosine of this spot? Yep. And the tangent is this divided by this. So what's 1 divided by 0? Undefined. Undefined. No answer. When you see the graph of that someday, tangent of that spot will be an asymptote. It doesn't exist. All right. So imagine a world in which I asked you to do... Like when you walked in this morning, you could not have done this. But now I think I can ask you to find the sine of well, any of these spots. But I'm going to ask you to find the sine of pi. You should be able to just go, okay, I know where that is. I'm going to decide if I can draw a triangle for it or if this is one of those kind where i got to use the unit circle. And then you can get the answer. Audrey, what do you say? Which spot am I at here? Spot one, two, three, or four? No, pi is not there. Pi is at spot three. That's where pi is. Got to memorize that. It's one of the biggies. Okay. Ava, what spot is there? What comma what? Negative one, zero. Perfect. And then, sine is the which one of it? I said there's a few things you had to memorize. Sine goes with what? Why? So it's zero. So the answer is zero. The end. How many of you had that as zero? Okay, good. Now let me show you one that the unit circle is actually, in my opinion, worse for. Would you please find me the sine of 5 pi over 6. Why is it worse? Well, because you have to memorize the unit circle. And I don't, because I'm going to draw a triangle for this. I have a way of getting it. It's kind of like the kid who's saying, I memorized all the double-digit numbers multiplied. Well, good for you. I don't want to. I'm going to just do them as I come to them. So, sine of 5 pi over 6. Did you draw a triangle right there? If you haven't already, do it. And then you'll be able to go, it's either a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90. You'll be able to draw on the sides. You don't even have to make it a unit circle, and you can get the answer. Mr. T, what are the, what is this, a 30, 60, 90? Yeah. It is. And do you know where the 30 is? Of the three angles, where is the 30? It's right near the center. So it's called the central angle. Right there. That's the 30. And then that's critical because then you know the 1 goes here and the 2 goes here and the square root of 3 goes there. And what's the most common mistake in circle trig that I guarantee a lot of you made? I bet a lot of you forgot the negative. Be honest. How many of you remembered the negative there? Oh, there's a few of you remember the negative. Okay. You might think, well, it doesn't matter, Mr. Server. In this case, it doesn't because sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so it's one half. But if I had asked you cosine, it would have mattered. What is the cosine of 5 pi over 6? Well, it's this over this. Negative root 3 over 2. 
Tangent's actually easier this way too, because tangent, on the other one, you have to divide two complicated fractions. And tangent here, tangent of five pi over six, toa, opposite. From this angle's perspective, that's the opposite over adjacent. It's negative one over root three, and I moved the negative to the top just because I like it better that way. If I wanted to, I could even rationalize it, and it would be root three over three. Just trying to remind you that that happens a lot, sometimes in homework problems, and you gotta know that that's the same as that. Okay, single, most important day of the semester for sure. Okay, now what do you do to make this stick, especially over a long weekend? Otherwise you come back and you're like, what did he even say on Friday? You gotta do some homework. So let's look at what problems I would do. That was the completely filled out unit circle back there on page five out of 10, which is awesome. If you wanna memorize that, go for it. But you don't have to, as long as you can draw triangles. Okay. All of these, that's a little much. All right, uh, let's, let's do some negative ones though because they just go in the opposite direction and it's really good for you to, to go like, what the heck is negative 13 pi over two? Well, you start with, everybody draw this one with me. Would you agree that negative pi over two is right there? That's negative one pi over two. This would be negative two pi over two, AKA negative pi. So where the heck is negative 13 pi over two? You're just gonna go round and around and around the circle until you find it. Negative one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two, five pi over two, six pi over two, seven pi over two, eight pi over two, nine pi over two, 10 pi over two, 11 pi over two, 12 pi over two, 13 pi over two. I'm back to that spot. So really, it's just that spot. And what do they want me to do? They want me to find the sine and the cosine of that spot right here. It just kind of around, around, around the circle, so it ended up there. Ooh, this is the kind where you do have to know the unit circle. So what's that spot? What comma what? On the unit circle, it would be 0 comma negative 1. And were you with me on that? OK, good. And then if I want the sine of it, what's the sine? of that spot is technically negative 13 pi over two. Sine of it is the y, negative one. Cosine of that spot, zero. All right, on this next, so back to this page. Let's do seven pi over four. Everybody, before you leave, just do this one problem. First of all, Figure out where 1 pi over 4 is. And then start counting them up and go, well, if 1 pi over 4 is 1 fourth of the way to pi, 1 pi over 4, oh, then this must be 2 pi over 4. And it'll keep confirming, like, oh, yeah, that's 2 pi over 4 is the same as pi over 2. 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4. Raise your hand if you were there before I was. Okay, good. Now, do I need the unit circle for this one? No, I don't, because I can just draw my triangle. And this one's pi over 4s, which I have memorized as 45s. 45, 45, 90. Ooh, 1, 1, root 2. What's the most common mistake in circle 3? Negatives. So that makes this a negative 1. That's the only one that's going in a negative direction. Remember that radiuses can't be negative. So, And now, sine of this. From this angle's perspective, use the central angle. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The answer is negative 1 over root 2. Will you freak out if the answer key says negative root 2 over 2? Please don't tell me you'd freak out because that's the same thing. It's just rationalized. You know what I mean? Yes. No, I will accept either answer. So I'm totally good with the green, or the, sorry, the blue answer or the black answer. Either one's okay. Just like on your AP Calc class, they'll accept you. All right. 
so important that you practice this. I kind of wish this day wasn't right before a long weekend, but we're not going to waste a day just just because because the long weekend has a tendency to make kids forget. So if you do some of this over the weekend, you'll be in good shape. There you go. Made it to the end of the most important day of the second semester. That's all I got for the video for today. I don't like them. Oh, I wish we had more good examples. But I think that's, a, if you do all of the ones that you had on that other page, I think that's good enough.